guys are had a bit of a plot twist. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. <laughs> I've just had a shower. It was very delicious. Rob's getting off the boat, so uh, that's the other guy who's about my age who kind of convinced me to come on the boat. Now, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. It's 6 a.m. We're gonna get ready to go on this trip. So we're just gonna top up the water just wait for the sun to come up and then shoot. Okay, Bianca, the spring is still on. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Oh yeah, that's that one. Oh. Hi, right, so now we're leaving. Basselton. We're about to head out of the marina. We got a two day sail to East Springs and it, um, depending on the weather, we'll either stop or and check and reset. Otherwise, we'll just carry on going. So that's it. Let's go. We'll just explain a few things about the boat. So, this boat is a, a Lagoon 380, so it's a 38 foot catamaran. The people on the boat, Tony and Shelley, they're a married couple, they are doing a yacht delivery. So what that is, is a company oh. is paying them or the owner is paying them to bring the yacht. It was in Malaysia and they're bringing it down around Australia and yeah. over to Port Macquarie, which is in New South Wales, just above Sydney. So they get paid uh, and all their costs are covered for the boat. So essentially I am volunteer crew on the boat. So I don't get paid, but I don't have to pay for anything, including food. So it's kind of like a exchange I suppose and there's websites that you can find these on so I found this in a Facebook group but there's also find a crew online which I have a profile on and you can look for or contact people who are looking for crew or or if you're looking for a boat you can have a look on there so it's a really cool way to travel because essentially most of the time sometimes they ask you to contribute sometimes there's paid positions depending on what you're looking for you can go through and search for whatever and sometimes they're not delivery sometimes it's just people who need extra crew to do a crossing or or things like that so it definitely is a great way to travel and I'm hoping that next year I'll be doing this around the Caribbean so it's also a great way to grow skills if you wanted to learn how to sail a lot of people will for day sales anyway just take completely green people just to have a look or just for some company so if it's something that you want to do definitely get into it I'll put some links in the in the description about it so the trip in total is going to be I think it's over 2,000 miles I don't know exactly I know. <laughs> um, it's over 2,000 nautical miles. So we go from uh, Perth, essentially, we start to Bustleton first and then Bustleton around. Now we're in Albany, we'll stop in East Prince and then across to Victoria at the bottom of Australia. And then from there, I'm unsure as to where we stop next, whether we just go through the Bass Strait and all the way up or what the goal is. So I haven't heard that far. We kind of like making it up as we go I suppose well they are so they know. <laughs> Tony has sailed a lot he's done racing and they've sailed all around the world so that's very it feels very safe for me um, that's one thing that I always check so I've done these kind of things a couple of times before and it's just how much sailing does this person have um, how much experience because it is a difficult thing to do and when things go wrong like it's easy in the fine weather but when things go wrong they go wrong really quickly and you have to know how to react and respond and so obviously I don't want to die on this boat uh, so I do trust that they also don't want to die on this boat which is the great thing we all have the same kind of idea is that we want to actually get to where we're going and yeah so Tony is a very knowledgeable person um, for that obviously I'm getting on the boat uh, there's another guy Rob who's here um, he's also doing the same thing as me just volunteering position <laughs> oh my god so sick. I just bought the again for the third time today. Just come off the back of the boat. I don't ever remember being this sick <coughs> on the boat. I don't remember throwing up ever on the boat. I spend a lot of time on boats, not always sailing, but like where I'm from as well. On boats, fishing and never have issues and the land is right there. It's not even rough. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's also like my nerves or something. The thing I'm thinking is I've been taking the CBD oil and it's the only thing that's changed since like I've ever sailed so I don't know if it's that or not which is maybe a weird thing but yeah I don't know. I just hope I feel better. That's it. Travel, but it's not a fun day. Not a fun day. Not the sun is shining. Let's go. 
during the day we're still on watch and we just check the wind, the wind direction, the wind speed, check for any ships or anything and it was nice and sunny, nice and smooth for a lot of it but I was very seasick. <laughs> and then we just adjust the sails as needed, eat some food, you know, fill the day with activities, read a book, watch some Netflix, anything you really want to do. We've got the course set and the boats on autopilot, so you kind of plot a spot, you plot a chart for where you're going, so you just keep an eye on if you're on watch, you keep an eye on where we're actually headed to and make sure we're kind of still going for that line. And then as we come around the coast, you've got to you know, change course as we, as we go, that's another part of the watch. Unfortunately, these people are weird. <laughs> They're not even weird. They just have a really bad communication style. They shout a lot, like at each other, at me, at Rob, and it's really, it's something that you don't have to deal with every day of your life, you know? So right now I'm weighing up whether it's worth putting up with that for the benefits that I can gain from this for me personally, uh, which putting up with them will also make me grow as a person, which, I'm wanting to do obviously. So let's power to our um, green screen for the charts. So we gotta go into Albany. This one in your hand. Wrap it. Yeah, you're gonna hit here, you need to go out out from here. Is there a line up there for that? Is it one of these ones? That one? Yeah, that 
Well, you can probably just throw it back to me up there. Or, I oh, know you're going that way, eh? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it pulled over enough already? Yeah. Alright, so we have an update. This is day three on the boat. So yesterday in the afternoon we our trout plotter stopped working, so it um just turned off and I think it's like quite old so it's just not gonna work. So we've got it back on now. But I, what we're going to do is get one sent to the next port that we're going to. So we pulled into Albany, uh, which is kind of on the way. We were it's the closest place that we were to. We have the trap plotter on the iPad as well, but we still need this one. It's pretty handy because it's outside. So as you can see, it's like up there, this, this one here. So we can set the iPad over there behind the wheel, but it's not waterproof it's not good to have it outside so we did have a backup to get into the harbour which is like perfect also very necessary um and we have had a look at it figured out that yeah it's probably broken or it's breaking so we'll go to the next port in the next couple of days depending on the wind so this is albany in western australia and we'll be here for maybe two days depending and then we'll sail to Esperance, which is another about 24 hours then from there we'll reassess again because I think what we'll do is we'll get one of these sent from Perth down to Esperance and we'll just meet it there. I think that's the best option. So we'll be stopping again. So a few extra days um, on the boat, but I'd rather have everything prepared than not, you know. Right now we did some other maintenance, fueled up. We'll put water in the boat again once we go to leave, like at the last minute, just to keep that topped up. Very, very important. Also tonight I'm going to message a friend who lives in this town, so hopefully we can catch up and go for a beer. That'll be nice. But other than that, sometimes it's hard to film when um when we're sailing because obviously it's just windy. I can always do voiceovers, but I'll get some footage anyway. Rob's just told me this morning that he is going to get off the boat. <laughs> so we did a day and a little bit, and now he wants to get off the boat. So uh, essentially it's just going to be me. So it was good because Rob's only a little bit older than me, so we're kind of in the same position. But he sailed a lot more. He's, yeah. Um... They just speak to us like we don't know anything so it's like they forget that we have a whole life outside of this i've traveled the world by myself like i know how to make my own breakfast you don't have to you know shout at me when i'm not up at six o'clock eating breakfast with you like just things like that it just seems ridiculous but when you're on a boat with nothing else and no one else it's you can't get away from it so um essentially i think yeah maybe they're shouting at me for that because without sailing they don't have anything else but without sailing I have a whole other life so it's probably one of those things but anyways I'm trying to understand it um and just yes like I said just weigh it up and see if it's really worth it but I think it will be uh but we'll see so we're going to still sail another day and that will be without Rob so it'll be the first time I've sailed on this boat without Rob so I'll see how it goes um essentially because then I can either get off or sail so either way I mean no one's holding me here if it is that bad and I decide I can't do this then I'll get off but um I think it will be I think it'll be all right I mean the longest thing is the other thing is once we leave Esperance it's you know seven eight nine days across the, the Great Australian Bight uh where you can't pull in they're not going to pull in just to let me get off the boat if I'm sad so <laughs> uh it would be you know a trying week but it's one week in my whole entire life, so not the end of the world. Um, also, then I'll be close to Melbourne. I can get off there and see my friends and travel from there. So, essentially, that's where we're at at the moment. So, I'm going to go to a cafe now, hang out, do some editing, keep busy. And, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll keep you updated. Hopefully, I can post these soon. Um, obviously, I don't have internet on the boat once we get away from Esperance, so I'll try to edit something. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments, like how you can get into this kind of thing or anything at all, let me know. And if you know anyone who's thinking about sailing, share these videos because they are great, obviously. Uh, but also just follow along on my journey. So from here, we'll do the boat, going around to Port Macquarie, then probably going to go to New Zealand uh, for a snowboard. So I'll keep documenting everything and maybe I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.